back to the alarm system. This wire right here, it terminates at that point above the stairs, up the stairs on the first floor for the alarm. This is another spot for the motion sensor. Here is the chimney for the wood burning stove. Underneath now, we're standing underneath the other wood burning stove upstairs and there's an ash pipe. That pipe is so you can uh, dump your ashes right there. You open it up a door, which doesn't exist yet, and dump your ashes in. They go in into a garbage can. What you're looking at here is a fan. When you work with the wood-burning stove upstairs so you don't get dust all over the house, there's a fan right there. And it blows out of the house and Therefore, you don't have any dust issue uh, in the house. There's a computer networking cable. It's just terminated there. Um, that's wired into the wall in the dining room. There is cable uh, that's run into the house. There's several spots. Uh, if you follow up here, it goes up into the near uh, the, the same area that the vent is at there is a networking cable that, that's run up the wall as well as a uh, coax cable the power panel is over here you can barely see it notice there's PEX tubing on the floor we started uh, the hydronic heat you can see up there uh, you can barely see anyway it was run along the wall uh, up in the ceiling uh, here, uh, right here, it's a laundry chute from the second floor. Anyway, the PEX tubing comes around, and here is the control panel for the PEX tubing and all the hydronic heat. This is important. This is the most. This is why I'm making the video. Right here, obviously, these all terminate here, and they're looped. The whole basement floor is heated. This first pump, this is pump one, two, three, four. Pump one controls the full basement. And I've got the manifold valve that's here. Pump two will control your perimeter heat of the house, which is not installed. You put a perimeter line um, probably two loops around the whole first floor, which I just tried to show you. And then pump three would control the bathroom, the master bathroom, and the master bedroom. The thermostats are in place in the walls already. Pump number four, it's a bigger pump as you can see, it's different. The big one for the basement and pump number four is the Upstairs, the second floor is fully um, done with PEX tubing. It's hydronic heat in the floors. And you can see this pipe right here goes through. There's another pipe that hasn't been completed. And these go upstairs. Thousand gallon milk tank. That's this is, uh, there, there was more insulation planned to insulate this better. It's a dairy tank. It's already insulated, but it needs more um, for a heat sink. Because the plan was to have solar heat. There is a, that's where the solar heat comes through the, the concrete wall from collectors that are outside on the south side of the house. The collectors aren't there either. It's, the, the system is in place. There is a forced air electric heat right now, um, but the main reason for the forced air is for the central air conditioning. Again, that is um, energy efficient. This is a geothermal, this connects to a 3600 foot geothermal field. And again, that went through the wall and there's a hot and a cold, that's why I use different color pipes. <clears throat> and you run a pump and you fill the system with antifreeze 
and the water gets cooled off to approximately 52 degrees and you put your heat exchanger in there, basically a radiator. It has to be computer designed for airflow, air speed, um, CFM, water temperature in, water temperature out. There's a lot of variables. And carrier who built the furnace can do that. <coughs> a regular HVAC guy can get that done. Anyway, you run your pump, you run the cold water in, and you circulate air and blow the cold air through the house. The water softener, it is not working. It needs to be replaced. <coughs> it's got a 50, I believe a 50 gallon electric water heater. Underneath the 1,000 gallon milk tank, <coughs> there's rebar. There's a section of rebar that comes out probably as far as the furnace. And then it comes out almost to this vent pipe over here. By the way, this is for the, the bathroom downstairs. That's for the shower, the toilet, the vent. <coughs> Another vent for a sink. <coughs> Which would drain into the ejection pit. The pump that's in there is a good pump. Probably the best on the market. <clears throat> on the market. It's for an ejector pit, but the lid needs to be completed. So you cannot have any gases that are allowed to go through. <clears throat> there is another um, area of heavy rebar underneath the floor, and that's right here below where you could actually put a fireplace if you wanted a masonry fireplace because <clears throat> we beefed up the floor for that. <clears throat> the walls, they're 10 inch thick concrete walls with four bars, four horizontal bars of rebar, not three. And like I said, the wall is eight, uh, 10 inches thick instead of eight inches, which is standard. There is one crack in the whole basement right here. It does seep a little water when it rains, easily fixed. <clears throat> I think that about covers the basement. That's where the well enters through the wall and up and around and over the water treatment area. <clears throat> One of the things I failed to mention, it's throughout the house. All the lumber that was used for floor joists and ceiling joists and any, any of the floors, uh, it's the engineered lumber. Septic system. The septic system is, I think, a 1,500 gallon tank, and we tried to keep everything as simple as possible. It's a full gravity drain system, so it the whole system grain, drains via gravity. So it goes outside and it, it goes into the tank via gravity. It exits the tank into the yard via gravity. <coughs> 